Let me start by recognizing the tremendous effort jointly deployed by our generous hosts, the Australian Federal Police and the Australian Department of Defense, and commend their well-established partnership with Interpol, I think a great team. For the last few days, I've been following your interventions and rich debates with great interest. I've been impressed by the exceptional quality of exchanges that have taken place in this marvelous venue. The issues shared by the different key stakeholders have provided us with a comprehensive view of the global terrorist IED field. It is clear that this is a very complex issue that can only be tackled through increased and a mutual understanding. We all came to Canberra this week with the objective of gathering key leaders from the government, civilian law enforcement, and the military in a framework of a strategic cooperation. In my opening remarks, I refer to the general consensus on the lack of a global coordination framework aligning the efforts of national and international stakeholders worldwide against the IED threat. Your interventions confirmed once again that this objective is the only way towards reaching an effective response. No one agency or country can tackle the asymmetric terrorist threat of IEDs in isolation. Now that the Global Alliance has been launched, I congratulate Australia for initiating its conceptual framework and ensure Interpol's full support. The Global Alliance strategy provides a voluntary, non-binding framework where members can undertake actions with the ultimate goal of reducing the IED threat and save lives. It offers a universal set of strategic objectives, including the adoption of a whole-of-government approach focusing on civilian law enforcement, military and diplomatic communities with the aim of establishing an international coherent response to the threats of IEDs. The embracing of the needs to share rather than a need to know principle when it comes to exchange of counter IED information and intelligence. The integration of collective resources and building capabilities to enable us all to better protect our populations and critical infrastructures. These strategic objectives are meant to be implemented at least through the four key conceptual pillars that have been identified, and maybe we have identified five of these pillars, but it's mainly component controls, capacity building, public awareness, and probably most importantly, information sharing. Ideally, these four conceptual pillars could be addressed within specialized venues offering stakeholders the opportunity to coordinate their efforts in a harmonized fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, since my election as Interpol Secretary General last November, I have identified counterterrorism along with organized and emerging crimes and cybersecurity, a key strategic priority of the organization and its program of activities to better serve our member countries. Interpol currently invests significant effort in terrorism, prevention and response, and capacity strengthening. Accordingly, the organization has created a dedicated counterterrorism directorate with an expanded mandate. These efforts were explicitly endorsed by the international community when the United Nations Security Council adopted Resolution 2178, calling upon member states to enhance their shared efforts in countering foreign terrorist fighters through Interpol's tools and services. Within this framework, Interpol is perfectly positioned to take the lead coordinating the implementation of the Global Alliance pillar addressing the information exchange. During almost all the sessions of the forum, our distinguished speakers presented concrete cases proving the power of information sharing across different agencies and countries in both prevention and response of the threat of IEDs. Our neutral, 
and trusted platform allows national law enforcement agencies across the world to securely share information and intelligence without ever losing control over their information. On the other hand, Interpol has a long-standing tradition in supporting its member countries through building and enhancing their law enforcement capacities. Interpol has developed several counterterrorism capacity building initiatives seeking to reduce the global chemical and IED threat by strengthening the prevention and responsibilities of member countries. The Global Alliance Initiative provides a framework for Interpol and other key international stakeholders such as the United Nations to develop joint activities which further strengthen their partnerships and avoid the duplication of efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems to me that we have taken really a significant step towards harmonizing what we all agree is a fragmented global architecture of countering IEDs. Multiple efforts have already been taken by the different stakeholders. We just need to turn the lights on as it was nicely and truly expressed today in our discussion. The Global Alliance to counter the threat of IEDs could finally be the single holistic strategic framework required to apply the whole of government approach on the global scale. What we have launched here today constitutes an exceptional momentum, too exceptional not to be seized and capitalized upon. Interpol is committed to co-host the next International Counter-Improvised Explosive Device Leaders Forum. In the meantime, there is no time to lose. The threat is rapidly evolving and lives are being lost every day. We need to keep the pace. I highly encourage all of you to keep the dialogue we have established this week here in Canberra. There is a pressing need for all of us to engage in immediate discussions with the objective of deciding upon action-oriented steps with a standardized approach. This could be achieved within the framework of the Global Alliance. Interpol is fully committed to support bridging the gap between civilian law enforcement and the military and to forge new links between counter-IED and counter-terrorism efforts worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I thank all of you for showing your engagement by being here with us this week and look forward to continuing our joint efforts until we meet again in next year's forum. It has been really a pleasure being here amongst you. I wish you all the best and a safe travels back home and hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.